All right, today I'm going to be giving you a thorough look inside of Beast Academy Level 2. Level 2 is recommended on their website for ages 7 through 9 approximately. And the entire level consists of 8 books, which you can see here. There are 4 guidebooks, um, A through D, and then there are 4 practice books as well. So each guidebook has its own practice book associated with it. I'm going to give you a look inside. Beast Academy is known for a strong conceptual and problem solving based approach to math. It's not a very traditional math curriculum and that's going to become more obvious as we look inside it. All right, so I'm going to take us on a look inside the 2A guide as well as the practice book and then I'll try to show you a little bit into the next one as well. Um, but to start with a glimpse at what topics are being covered in this level. So they give you right here, there's three chapters in each of the guidebooks. We're seeing the topics covered, place value, comparing, addition, subtraction, expressions, problem solving, measurement, strategies for adding and subtracting, odds and evens, big numbers, algorithms, and problem solving. So you can see kind of your basic contents right there. Then they have an introduction to all of the characters. And you begin with a comic book style introduction, which is how to use this book. So it's kind of a little primer in how to read the comic book style, how to pay, like certain things that should be paid attention to in the text. So if you're just starting out with Beast Academy, this is definitely helpful to go over with your child so that you're how to use the book. And then you get straight into your chapter. So it is a comic book or graphic novel style and it's following some beasts or monster creatures who are going to a school or an academy. So here's getting on the school bus and the first day and introductions. And throughout the story, um, math concepts are communicated often through teachers at the school who are posing questions to their students, talking about different strategies for solving those questions. So you can see what's going on here. We're organizing these little things into groups of 10 and we end up with 64 of them. and just continues following a story introducing different concepts. Something to note is that there's little stop signs throughout the text. So for example, how else could you write Grog's count right here? So it looks like they created symbols to represent a count. You're supposed to stop, discuss, or, or the student is supposed to answer these questions. There are also little boxes at the bottom of the page to point Let's see. Sorry, it's not focusing. There's also little boxes at the bottom of a page to point you to, okay, you can go to the practice book now. And these pages in the practice book will apply to the concepts being introduced here. So that is a glimpse inside the book. There's a lot of humor, character, personality for sure, but there is Definitely very specific math. You're seeing equations being written out, strategies coming out kind of in diagrams and different ways of writing the strategies. At the end, there is an index, so you can reference where different topics are talked about throughout the book. Then we get to the practice guide, and you, know, you can learn a lot from the teaching guide but to really apply what you've been taught, you're going to be heading to your practice book. And you do have to pay attention to where, what practice pages you are supposed to do when. So we can look here at the bottom of each page. It's saying guide pages 16 to 23. You, once you've read the guide, these pages in the guide, then you can be heading to the practice book. To work on these pages of questions and there's several pages of questions for each little section of the guide and then here 
we begin, okay, guide pages 24 through 29. So you have a few pages to start off with. And at the beginning, you'll see that the practice problems are pretty simple. The beginning of each section is going to have a little bit more simpler of practice problems, but they do get more complicated. And as you go on, more complicated problems, problems that are going to involve more thinking to solve the problem are going to have a star. So write three different three digit numbers that use the digits seven, eight, and eight. So that's going to require a, li a little bit more thought for your child. And then there's even harder problems at times. I'll see if I see an example, but even more challenging problems will be marked with two stars. So I do give some instructions here with what you're supposed to do, but lots of problems. The, this is a black and white, completely black and white, or I guess grayscale practice book. Here they're, and they kind of level up in some ways. Here they're showing the blocks, showing the blocks, but then here, try these last three without using the blocks. So we're, we're having some visuals, but then we're also trying to solve problems mentally. So just giving a glimpse at the types of problems you can expect. There is a strong focus on puzzle solving in some sense, problem solving. So you're gonna see some problems that do look uh, quite a bit different that you don't necessarily see in traditional math curriculums, such as here, we're filling in empty squares to complete the digit difference grid for each of these digit difference grids. And then we get a more challenging one right here because they've only filled in two of the boxes so far. Now, something to note for those starred problems or the single starred or double starred problems, um, if they are too difficult, you can head to the back and there are hints for the selected problems. So there are hints for every problem that's marked with a star. You are encouraged to have your child work on the problems, think about them before heading straight to the hints, but the hints are here to help you so you don't have to feel helpless. In addition, there are complete solutions for every problem and those are just located right here in the back of the book. So have no fear, parent. <laughs> there are solutions for everything. You will be able to figure out and have the help you need there. Um, but here's, as you can see, there's quite a good amount of practice offered for this first guidebook. I'm gonna skip ahead to showing you 2D just to show how it kind of levels up a little bit in complexity. So here's our math guide for 2D. So this is where we get big numbers, algorithms and problem solving. And just a look at how it's looking in the guide, comic book style, but we're getting a lot of diagrams, lots of experience with numbers. And you can see, so you're following a story, you're following the same characters throughout but you also really do want to be focusing on the math strategies, problem solving strategies and concepts that are being taught. So in this um, book, you're getting some vocabulary introduced. You're getting algorithm introduced as vocabulary. What does that mean? How does that function in math? Once again, we have our index that we can head to if we need to look something up. All sorts of big numbers there. And then to take a glimpse at the practice guide, this one's a little bit thicker than the first one. And once again, you can always tell which pages you need to be working on by looking at the bottom of the page. Ooh, we've got number cross puzzles here instead of crossword puzzles. And they have the instructions on how you would fill in a number cross puzzle. So there's definitely, like I've used many math curriculums, there's definitely some um, different, very different sorts of problems that you don't typically see in elementary math curriculums. Here, this is number lap puzzle. So we have instructions on how to solve those. There's a strong focus on puzzle solving, creative mathematical thinking, 
This is a curriculum designed for kids that love math, that thrive in math. This isn't the curriculum I'd head to with a child who's struggling with math because this is definitely one that's going to force you to slow down and really think about solving some of these challenging problems. You won't really, um, like other math curriculums with advanced math students, you, you know, you might hand them a worksheet and they'll just lickety cut, finish it in just a couple minutes. This is going to force them to slow down, really think about, you know, kind of stretch their brains um, to wrap their minds around some of these trickier problems to really get them thinking mathematically about problem solving. So that is what you can expect and a good solid look inside of Beast Academy Level 2. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can leave them in the comments below and if you've used this, um, you can leave your feedback on what your experience with using Beast Academy was. And we're going to be using this in our homeschool. If you like nerdy homeschool videos like this, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because I have so many more nerdy homeschool videos just like this one. I'll be seeing you next time. Bye! Thank you.